The Water Temple is one of the most fun temples to explore within The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. You'll meet up with a familiar character from Breath of the Wild, you'll receive some familiar gear, and you'll even jump around in anti-gravity. Let's teach you everything you need to know. Welcome back everyone, it's Abdali here with another awesome tips and tricks tutorial video for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Today's video is all about the Water Temple. We're going to show you exactly the lead up on how to get over to the Water Temple and what is required in order to start off those quests. And we'll show you every single puzzle within. Not only that, we'll take it a step further and show you exactly how to beat the boss. So feel free to use any of the chapters on the bottom of the screen over here to navigate the video accordingly. And while you're here, hit that like button and share the video with a friend if you have someone that is also playing playing Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Oh my gosh. I'd love to have you guys on board. Let's hit it. Let's hit that subscribe button and show you exactly what's going on within the entire Water Temple. From central Hyrule, explore your way directly east towards Zora's Domain. The area may look familiar, but it's covered in a strange black sludge. Activate the Magawak Shrine nearby and continue towards the middle of the domain. Walk up next to the group of Zoras in the middle of the domain near the Sludge Statue and start the quest called the Sludge Covered Statue. You'll need to have picked up some of the splash fruit around nearby bushes right outside of Zora's domain and feel free to fuse that with an arrow to fire at the statue in order to remove the sludge. This will be the theme all throughout the upcoming quest so keep it in mind that you can save arrows by simply holding down the R button then pressing up on the D-pad to throw any material such as a splash fruit. You learn that the green Zora is Yona, Prince Sidon's fiance, and she tells you to head to Mipha Court all the way up on top of the mountain nearby. It'll be hard to get over there without the Zora tunic, so you'll need to head to the infirmary in the back of Zora's domain and talk to Yona again. Upon talking to Yona, she'll ask you for an ancient arowana to fix the Zora armor, and if you don't have one in your inventory, you'll have to warp all the way back up to the Great Sky Isles and check out ponds near waterfalls for the fish, specifically on the west side near the giant lake that you had to cross. Shoot one with an arrow and swim up to it to collect it. Warp back to Zora's domain and give Yona the fish in order for her to fix the Zora armor for you to make your way up to Prince Sidon. Equip the Zora armor and run towards the east exit of Zora's domain. Uh, then find the nearest waterfall and press the A button to swim all the way up it without losing stamina. Keep swimming up waterfalls all the way up to Mipha Court where you'll find Prince Sidon using his powers to stop the sludge from overtaking Zora's domain. He'll mention that he can't leave his post but wants you to find Giotto at Toto Lake to get more information about Zelda. Now, if you didn't unlock the nearby Skyview Tower, now would be the best time for that, as navigating blindly without names for points of interest is not the best idea here. Plus, we also know how to get rid of sludge, so make your way over to the upland Zorana Skyview Tower and throw a splash fruit at the entrance to open the door and activate the terminal. After launching upwards, you'll now have access to the map and be able to locate exactly where Toto Lake is. While you're here, fly into the giant floating sphere and unlock the Gamak Shrine, as we'll need this as a warp point later. Head to Toto Lake and meet with Giotto, who is observing a broken Zora Stone Slate. Luckily for us, the other piece of the slate is directly behind him, so use the Ultra Hand to grab it and put it in place on the wall. Giotto reads it and tells you a riddle that involves getting the Mark of the King, so you'll need to find King Dorophon and talk to him about it. Return to Zora's domain and find three Zora children playing a game where they pretend to be King Dorophon. They know his location, but they won't tell it to you if you walk up to them. You'll have to sneak behind the giant structure and eavesdrop on their conversation to learn the whereabouts of the king. You'll learn that the king is hidden behind a waterfall with clear water, and ironically enough, you swam up that exact waterfall earlier. So head back out towards the east by Macau Lake and swim through the waterfall there. You'll find King Dorophon in bad condition, but he's got enough energy to tell you about the Zora Riddle, and he'll give you five marks of the king, which you'll use once you've located the land of the Skyfish. Return to Sidon and inform him that you've got the marks, and he'll tell you a bit more about the land of the Skyfish and a floating droplet. Warp to the Gamak Shrine and make a flying wing by placing a single fan on the back of it, then placing the wing on the roller cart to get some momentum. Fly across the chasm and land on a smaller island directly nearby. We're aiming for a small island to the east that is in the shape of a fish, so align your wing and launch it towards that direction. 
Once you land on the giant fish, you'll need to stand on the very top of it and look towards the southwest direction, and you'll see floating rocks in the shape of a droplet. Fuse a Mark of the King to an arrow and launch it in the middle of the droplet to release a mysterious light in the East Reservoir Lake. Head back to Sidon and you'll be faced with a boss battle versus a sludge-like. Sidon will leave his post and help you by protecting you with a water shield that you can release with the swipe of a weapon, and that turns into a water blade projectile. In order to remove the sludge on the sludge-like's body, you'll need to use Sidon's ability and get really close to hit it with the water blade. Once its barrier is removed, it'll be susceptible to any attack when its tongue is sticking out. Hit its tongue to stun it and proceed to deal massive damage with melee weapons. You'll need to repeat this process multiple times until his health is drained to zero. If you feel the battlefield is getting covered in too much sludge, you'll still be able to throw a few splash fruits to make the path towards the boss a little easier. Defeat the boss and Yona will take Sidon's place and allow him to adventure with you towards the Pillar of Light in the East Reservoir Lake. Sidon will make a whirlpool around the light and allow you to jump inside to reveal the ancient Zora waterworks. Find a pipe that's blocked by rocks and break them to raise the water level. Continue forward and you'll see many other pipes that are clogged, so use rafts in order to get yourself close enough to break the rocks and raise water levels again. After your second blockage, make your way to the third one that's along the wall. There are wooden platforms nearby, so fashion a bridge and enter the pipe to unclog the third one. The fourth clog can be found in a sewer system within a wall. Walk along narrow corridors until you find a junction with vertical streams coming from the ceiling. Use a send there to find the clog and break it free. This will raise the water to the very top, allowing you to activate the light and release the waterfall from the sky. Climb the waterfall to the top and you'll find a bunch of sky islands and really low gravity that will allow you to jump really far and not spend a lot of stamina gliding. Also, it'll allow you to not take any damage from heights. Jump into one of the bubbles that are launching diagonally and proceed to make your way upwards and onwards. You'll find yourself jumping and glide boosting your way to many different statues that you'll need to climb up to the top of. If you need a vertical boost, don't forget that you can use Hylian pine cones and a bonfire to launch yourself upwards. Eventually, you'll come across a water bubble puzzle, where you'll need to make a ramp for the bubble launcher to toss a bubble at and ricochet you diagonally upwards to the next island. Make a wing with a single fan on the back of it and a roller cart attached underneath it and fly up the runway to the next island where Sidon is waiting for you. Destroy the construct and swim up the yellow waterfall to finally reach the water temple. Upon entering the water temple, you'll notice that there's a sludge monster clogging the basin. So head to the glowing green hand pad to see that you'll need to activate four faucets in the temple to proceed to flush that sludge down the drain. The first faucet will be in basement one, so jump off the west side of the temple and glide to an area that has fire bars coming from the ceiling. Use Sidon's water shield to allow you into the area to start the puzzle. This puzzle will require good timing and the knowledge of floating Zonai platforms. So use the nearby floating platform to block some of the vertical fire bars so you can access Sidon's shield. You'll then need to jump down and use the floating platform to carry a marble to the other side. Climb up the wall and grab the platform with the marble on it. Then proceed to place the marble on the edge of the floating platform and insert it into the wall. If any of the floating platforms lose their ability to float, you can glue them to another floating platform in order to recharge it. Ensure that you can block the flames to access Sidon, and then use his water blade to activate the first switch behind the gate. Now facing the giant sludge monster, we're going to take the leftmost island for the next faucet. Destroy all the constructs and you'll be able to see that there's a giant marble in a small lake. Use some water to free up a bubble launcher and place the giant marble in front of the launcher to push it to the next island above. Receive the marble and place it in the water near the waterfall, and then grab a floating platform and glue it to the top of the water dam. Raise the dam and the marble will sink to its intended spot, thus opening the gate for you to activate the second faucet. Facing the giant sludge monster, we're going to the rightmost island for faucet number three. Defeat a fire-like and use water bubbles to make your way closer to the faucet. You'll notice a rudder that is a little too short to reach a waterfall, so use Ultra Hand to glue two square pieces on opposite planks of the rudder in order to generate infinite electricity. 
Grab a giant water bubble and place it in between the two electric conductors to open up the gate to the third faucet. Continue moving clockwise and you'll notice a giant spinning tower. Defeat the constructs nearby and use the floating platforms to get as high and close to the spinning tower as possible. You'll need to hit it with a splash arrow so either use really good timing or jump in the air and draw your bow to slow time down while you fire at it. Hit the switch to reveal the final faucet. Warp to the entrance of the temple and activate the glowing green hand pad to reveal the temple boss named Muktorok, the Scourge of the Water Temple. The way to beat Muktorok is to hit him with water to remove his sludge shark armor, so use Sidon's ability to sneak up and hit him. As soon as the shark armor is removed, Muktorok will start running away from you, so fire an arrow to trip him up and proceed to hit him with melee attacks until his health is at 50%. On the second phase, the entire area gets covered with sludge, which makes chasing after Muktarok a lot harder. Watch out for his sludge shockwaves, so simply jump over them while you have the side on water shield on, and proceed to attack him like usual. Once you break his shark armor, Muktarok will swim very fast away from you in the sludge like it's playing Splatoon. So, see if you can jump in the air and slow time down in order to fire an arrow and stun him. If you still have enough splash fruits and arrows, you can use those to destroy his shark armor a little bit faster. Continue breaking his armor and chasing him down until his health reaches zero and he explodes, revealing a heart container for your trouble. Congratulations. And there you have it. The water temple is done and in the books. That is going to be another fun one. Man, Sidon was so cool. I'm so glad that he's back. He was definitely one of my favorite characters in Breath of the Wild. And now that he's over here and helping you out right alongside, giving you a water shield and allowing you to do some water damage, so, so fun. Honestly, jumping around in anti-gravity was probably my, my favorite part. Honestly, jumping in midair and then just initiating a slow motion like arrow fire oh too cool anyway that's going to be it for the tutorial we've got a couple more going on for the main story quests our next video since uh we've already shown you all four of the temples is going to be based on hyrule castle how do you get over there what's going to be inside it who knows but you will find out thanks so much for watching and if this video helped you out do me a favor smash that like button and share the video with another zelda fan and of course hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming legends of zelda tears of the kingdom content i'll be working really hard behind the scenes to get that all to you so turn those notifications on we'll see you next time thanks for watching